The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Rest of the Life, it's episode 245, it is September 3rd, 2020, I'm Ethan. Hello Ethan, it is your girl, the legit boss, Sasha Banks. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we cannot talk about right here on the first and only wrestling podcast. That's right, WWE ran their second pay-per-view in eight days this past weekend <laughs> show full of baby face wins um what'd you think it was fine uh as with many of these uh non-big wwe pay-per-views over the last six months or so my favorite part is that it was uh, off the air at nine thirty. uh yeah it was that's great <laughs> It was like a two hour, thirty minute show. Yeah. Yeah, as you said, it was it was a lot of good guys winning, a lot of short matches. Didn't really feel like a lot of things overstayed their welcome. Um yeah, I I'd, I'd give that show a thumb up. What do you think about the uh Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns pairing? We haven't talked about that on the show yet. It's interesting. Um I don't I don't know that this was... It's so funny, right? The idea of, oh, I I was never someone that really was really hard on the turn Roman Reigns heel train. Because I feel like people are just going to boo him or cheer him or whatever, no matter what. So just just let him... Just tell an interesting story with your characters. And the fans will choose who to boo and who to cheer. Sure. Um, So, I mean, it's an interesting story. Um... If the idea is Roman will be will do they will ask him to do less of a nineteen ninety nine Dwayne Johnson impression and he just gets to be a silent <laughs> guy who beats everybody up. Great. And you let Paul talk for him. Uh yeah, great. I'm I'm t- perfectly fine with that. Uh it didn't it, it didn't feel like some earth shattering thing to me, other than I guess it's fascinating that after all this time they finally are like yeah okay he can kind of be a heel <laughs> do you think it's because they're mad at him could be have the... but like, i don't i like my thought is always like if you turn your tippy top guy you right. best have someone ready to replace him yeah do they no cuz i'm pretty sure drew's about to lose that belt to Randy Orton Yes. <laughs> and I guess we're hoping Keith Lee is going to be all right. Yeah. But yeah. I don't see Keith Lee being a long-term top guy in a Vince McMahon promotion. He might work with a lot of the top guys. But, so, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not quite turning Goldberg in 2000, but <laughs> it is that thing where, like, well, if you're going to turn him, if there's not, like, a clear heir apparent that you're going to build the show around. I uh, I don't know what you're doing. Is is the poor man psycho clown going to be the baby face now? That's what PW Insider was reporting, is that Bray Wyatt's going to be top baby face. <laughs> and Roman is top heel now. I mean, I guess a lot of weird people, weird nerds on Twitter like him anyway, so... Do they? Uh, uh, based on when I... <laughs> okay, to be fair... I may have been fishing a little bit, but when I tweeted the words Bray Wyatt sucks and has never had a good match or feud, uh, there were quite a few people who disagreed with that statement. I'll just say that. Has he ever had a good match, though? Uh, Someone, the matches that were thrown at me were his match with Daniel Bryan at the Royal Rumble nine years ago. (laughs) um, And his match with Daniel Bryan at the Royal Rumble this year. Which I do not remember. And I will not. I refuse to ever go back and watch anything uh, Bray Wyatt related a second time. I guess I he was like... in those six mans with the shield a million years ago. Oh yeah, those were great. 
Those are fantastic. One of those is a five star match. I don't remember which one off the top of my head, but one of those is incredible. Um, the first scene of WrestleMania match was good. I remember that. Okay. I'll take <laughs> and, your word for it. And yeah, of course, the first Daniel Bryan match was good. And then the one this year was like less bad than most Fiend matches. But to I would not go so far as to call it good. I would I would not either. But I guess people like Bray Wyatt or think he's creative or something. So maybe that's fine. I mean, that's I guess that's a fine winter program. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you you build the Brian coming back and. Do Brian and Roman next year as your your stopgap, or you AJ and Roman, or like you can do a bunch of stopgap baby faces against Roman, but I don't see anybody who's like the obvious long term project that we're gonna we're gonna make like the eternal rival of this guy. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a good answer for you, and I, I don't think they have a good answer either. I mean, Matt Riddle got a win on the show, but. I wouldn't be building anything around Matt Riddle right now, and same. they they seem to be kind of in that same mode of all right. Well, he's he's here, but he's uh, he's still problematic, so we can't really strap a rocket to him yet. Uh, the way that they are with Keith Lee on Raw. So, uh, what did you th- think about Randy Orton? What, first of all, on Monday Night Raw, they went through like three months worth of uh, <laughs> of story in one night. They did a one-night tournament, but they didn't call it a tournament, uh, to determine Drew McIntyre's challenger at the next pay-per-view. It was Randy Orton. Keith Lee got a big win over Dolph Ziggler, a guy they hate. Um, <laughs> like, how annoying must you be to be a Republican in that company and they hate you, you know? <laughs> he, must, he must just be the worst. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so they beat Keith Lee. Well, they didn't really beat him. They beat him, but they didn't beat him in the main event where uh, <laughs> that plucky young young newcomer, Randall Orton, got a big win and will be facing Drew McIntyre for the title at Clash of Champions later this month. Not Re- Clash of the Champions. No, so we can't use any WCW-ish. Uh, what did you think of... Uh, uh, what did you think of another, another, uh, another cycle of Push Orton? <laughs> if... If this were a company I had faith in to tell a long-term story, yeah. I would say this is fine. Because you set up Orton for the title match. Let's all just assume he's going to win it. And then you have, already you have a fresh challenger for him immediately with Keith Lee, who pinned him in five minutes clean as a sheet. Yeah. So, theoretically, and then you, you can even... Again, in a company that I trusted to do a long-term build, you can have Orton duck that match for another month and and or two and really build to it and really try to get people excited for the idea of Keith Lee finally getting his title match or whatever. But we'll, uh, we'll file that one under. We'll see. <laughs> sure. Sure. Keith Lee, by the way, uh, 35 years old. <laughs> I mean, he's a youngster on that show. I mean, he is, and in TV he's, TV years, he's very young, but also 35 years old. The youngest NXT champion in years. <laughs> yeah, so WWE is, uh, they're building this some stuff. I don't know that we're getting Braun and Roman at the next pay-per-view, or I guess we'll find out after SmackDown this week, but uh, Braun, boy, they sure made him look like a bitch. <laughs> So they did, like, the weakest version of the ring break superplex spot I've ever seen. Never seen it have less impact. And, I mean, to be fair, they've done it, what what was this, like, four or five times now that they've done this? Yeah, they did. There was, like, all those years where they'd only done it twice. And then I think they've done it at least two more times now. Maybe three, like, in the last five years or so. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was obviously the, the the Brock and Big Show, and then there was the Henry and Big Show, right? And then I think they, what they did Big Show and Braun, I think I bl- did it. I think so, yeah. And then yeah, I think there might have been one more in there before the uh, 
before this current one. But yeah, they did that, and then Roman beat them both up and <laughs> and won. Um, which again, I guess that's fine. I I Ro- Braun's lot in life is to be the the cane of this era, and he will work <laughs> with all the top guys forever. And he will turn babyface and heel once every two months, depending on what they decide they want him to do. And he's not a long-term top guy. And I hope he never holds that belt again, because this was like an all-time terrible reign. And think of the ground that covers. Yeah. Yeah, it's not... I personally don't have anything against the guy. Like, it's not his fault he was slotted as... Uh, a champion with no challengers ready. You know, it's not his fault that he's best suited to be like, <laughs> that he's like uh, 35 years too late. <laughs> he came around 35 yeah. years too late. Like, he, he would have been a perfect attraction guy who worked a territory once a year <laughs> in the 80s or mm-hmm. the 70s, even. Like, it's not his fault. I don't have anything against the guy, but. Yeah. I, I hear the uh, the Chronicle documentary they did on him was very good too um he he has shown more personality in those pieces than in six years on television or whatever it is like those pieces are phenomenal and i understand not necessarily wanting to present your big monster guy as like this big uh teddy bear who gets emotional like okay but just let him talk for himself at least because he's so much more charismatic and so much more likable on those pieces <laughs> than he is on TV. Yeah, I feel like that's a theme with those with those documentaries. <laughs> a lot of people come out come off a lot more likable. Uh, <laughs> not on WWE television or not on Twitter. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, NXT this week, they did, booked a 60-minute Iron Man match. Uh, and then didn't do a finish. (laughs) They sure did. I haven't watched NXT since the July 4th episode. Uh, Life is short, and I find that um, very often uh, in the preceding months before that episode, I, uh, I used to look forward to watching NXT overnight after watching AEW, and then it came to a point where I no longer in- looked forward to it. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I just stopped watching it. And um, if I had watched a 60-minute Iron Man match where they didn't book a finish this week, I would have been uh, quite angry. Um, <laughs> there's just there's way too much stuff. They definitely don't need to be on Wednesday nights as um, they're one or two nights now on Tuesday have shown that they're both shows dynamite and NXT. Their numbers are better when they are standalone shows and um, there needs to be less content. New Japan is running 30 shows in a 45 day stretch. They're running shows in America with zero fans with Darren Young and Justin Gabriel on the shows. (laughs) Honest to God, nothing against those guys, you know, but why You're feeling the 2020 Nexus reunion? No, why? Why are we doing? Why is everyone's content strategy? Let's just force feed as much product as we possibly can to our audiences, whether they want it or not, whether it financially makes sense for us to or not. <laughs> like New Japan can't be making any money or getting any subscriptions for their streaming service. For these shows in America with no fans, <laughs> with Jay White and Kenta on top, and Darren Young and Justin Gabriel underneath. Like, there's no way they're making money on those. There's no way it's cost effective for AEW to run dark, let alone launch a second television show later this year. Like, there's n- there's no way that NXT is making money. Um, like, what what are we doing? Why is this everyone's content strategy? I think there's just this idea that our audiences are smaller now than they've ever been. And rather than try to build new fans with the existing shows that we have, we will attempt to super serve the existing fans to keep them from leaving. We'll just pack it with so much content 
that they won't leave like the other fans have. <laughs> that's that's my best guess because that's I think and everyone I think everyone is chasing like the minutes watched thing mm. that YouTube and a lot of streaming services like go by. Um so I think there's probably some of that too. Um yeah, I don't I I don't, I don't know that that's a a sustainable business and to your point like if the if the American New Japan shows were like it was like the dojo kids and it's all the young lions wrestling some veterans or whatever right. and it's a way to get some names out there so that when they show up in real New Japan you'll have an idea of who they are that would be fine but to your point it's known ish head it's like TJ Perkins and Rocky <laughs> Romero and it's just everybody who can't get into Japan, like everyone who lives in the U.S. Right. And, can't, and God bless like Tom Lawler and some of these n- other people that are on the shows. But like, what are what are we doing? Like, what are, what are, what are we doing? <laughs> like, yeah. what who who asked for this? Yes. And who is it helping? Yes. Yes. That's that's my question. Yeah, so AEW is going to have a second television show before the end of the year. Cool. On, on real television, or <laughs> on real television, one of the one of the Turner networks. Okay. Why? Like... <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, I I I I don't know. Tell you other than what we've already talked about. Like I said, I think it's just there's this idea that we need to super serve our existing clientele. And that's the only way to keep them from leaving is if we just constantly barrage them <laughs> with content. But but anecdotally, in the experience that I shared at the start of this rant, <laughs> uh, being super served makes me want to do other things with my sp- spare television watching time than watch NXT. Um, the Dynamite audience is smaller now than it was when it debuted 11 months ago. The NXT audience is smaller now than it was when it debuted 11 months ago. Raw has kind of stabilized the last couple of weeks. But obviously, you know, it's a third of what it was seven years ago. <laughs> um, or, you know, eight years ago, ten years ago, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, anecdotally, this uh, this is not an effective strategy either. So... I, yeah, it doesn't seem that way. But <laughs> it's, it's like no, and, and then you know, ugh, the NFL's coming back. The NFL will be back in like uh, a, a week from today. <laughs> so gonna Raw's gonna get Raw's gonna get killed, and uh, SmackDown should be okay though. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't know what's gonna what's gonna go on with that. It's just yeah, to me, it's. We're just throwing things at the wall, and the current strategy is just give them everything all the time. <laughs> yes. And I would like to sit down with AEW's people specifically and New Japan's people and explain to them. I want to hear their thought process, and I want to explain to them why they're wrong. <laughs> but... <laughs> I don't. I don't feel like I'm going to get that well, opportunity. Well, the answer for AEW adding a second show is they're getting paid for it. I assume. Yeah, that's fine. But like, then why do we have dark? Like, that's. I mean, yeah, that one they just do for fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, the... where else are we going to see a bad in matches? You know, <laughs> where else are we going to see Ricky Starks uh, squash Brian Pillman Jr. Another idiot. <laughs> Uh, before we get off of uh, NXT here, do you want to talk about it being a haven for very problematic and potentially uh, sex pe- predators? Yes, yeah, so that's the so obviously there's the Velveteen Dream stuff, which is it's pretty uh, pretty bad. I think that's fair to say. Oh, it's awful. A um, lot of a lot of evidence. Uh, Sherlock uh, Helmsley <laughs> wasn't able to crack the case and said everything looks good, and then like. More evidence came out immediately after that. Um, and then in the meantime, uh, Austin Theory, who was accused, and I think with photo evidence, of uh, DMing 
uh, young fans and emphasis on the young uh, just disappeared from raw television after being the third man of uh, Seth Rollins, terrible little trio. And uh, they, and then all of a sudden he popped back up in NXT. So yeah, I guess it is. uh, That's the Island of uh, misfit perverts now. And then one of the guys that they just signed from evolve had some allegations as well. Oh, oh yeah, very cool. Uh, yeah, between that and uh, apparently uh, QAnon, big, big QAnon guys in that uh, in, in NXT between the Road Dog and uh, the one Ref and Bob Fish. So just yeah. just just a bunch of terrible, terrible people working for that company right now. Yeah, yeah, and the product not all that good right now. Yes, <laughs> secondary. <laughs> By the way. <laughs> Four heels in that Iron Man match. <laughs> mm-hmm. Four Does heels. Does NXT have baby faces? I, I I don't I don't know I don't I mean they turned Johnny and Candace so I don't think so. Right. <laughs> I mean they had Keith Lee and he's gone. Yes. Uh, so it's like it's like uh, is Isaiah Swerve Scott the top baby face in NXT by default now? I think so. I think so. It's Fandango. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the women's side, you got Rhea. Who I think is babyface, but I think yes. Rhea's, I think Rhea's going north soon. Yeah, they've given her a new uh, a new look, very because again Vince needs to have it explained their characters to them in ways he understands. So she's <laughs> Luna Vachon now. Um, uh, that's how that's how he can understand what they are. Uh, so yeah, I think they're they're doing a cage match, which has traditionally been a loser leaves match in NXT, even if they don't come out and say that it was for the aforementioned problematic Matt Riddle, as well as Balor and a few others over the years. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see if she's on her way out the door as well. God bless Mercedes Martinez. I wouldn't have Rhea Ripley do a job for Mercedes Martinez under any circumstance. (laughs) That's fair. Under fair, but, any circumstance. I cannot emphasize enough any circumstance. <laughs> noted, noted. I mean, but look, Bailey needs a challenger while they continue to tease this Sasha breakup for the next seventeen months and sixteen days. So I mean, we gotta we gotta send Rhea up there and she's she's gotta she's gotta lose before she leaves the territory. Right, even though it's not oh. Right, and then they'll change her music and probably give her a haircut when she gets to the main roster. Why can they cut her hair anymore? I don't know. They'll dye it or something. Yeah. Um, let's see. You said something there that I wanted to talk about, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, we have um, AEW All Out is coming up this Saturday on pay-per-view. Who boy, there's a lot of matches for this show. Um, there's a lot of stip matches on this show, specifically. So Cody uh, couldn't get the WCW Uncensored uh, trademark, but that's what this show is, I guess. I, I, I suppose. There's uh, Britt Baker uh, against Big Swole on the buy-in show. In a tooth and nail match, never explained what a tooth and nail match was. What do you think it is? She said something about, I'm coming to your job. So is the, are they going to have a fight in the dentist's office? And it's going to be a cinematic experience. Uh, that's probably a safe bet. Yeah, it's a good bet. Uh, but, you know, if I had two hours of national television, international television even, uh, I would announce the match there and not on social media like three days later. But I agree. I, I, also, I also think if you uh, do build up for a match for three months, it should probably be on your pay-per-view and not on the pre-show. But, sure. hey, you know, what do I know? Uh, speaking of here, so Matt Hardy is wrestling Sammy Guevara on this show. Um, it's a broken rules match, which they explained in a tweet that they sent out at like 11.15 this past Monday night, that it's broken rules means it's last man standing. 
basically it's a WWE last man standing match. And if Matt Hardy loses, he has to retire. So then on Dynamite this week, the big angle for this match took place during a commercial break where Hardy and Guevara had their dueling uh, cue cards that they were showing each other. Coming a week after, they had a seven-minute table match that had a commercial break in the middle of it where Sammy got busted open a hard way for real during a commercial break. Who times these shows out? Um, well, I, it's like not only who times them out, but who's, uh, do the refs have your pieces? Are we, are we holding people to their times? Because I know, I know it was reported that, oh, things went long, but it's like, well, how long were they supposed to go? <laughs> and what are the consequences for going over your time? Right. Like, and no offense, but like. This, right, this was the main event of your show. This is not CM Punk and The Undertaker going long, and so the Funkadactyls match gets bumped from <laughs> WrestleMania that one year. Right. Like, this is like, it's the main event, and it's leading to, it's part of a build to what is, I would imagine, a match a lot of people who like AEW want to see, that yeah. being Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara. And, yeah, so they, they had a seven-minute tables match, and they had to shoot their angle during a commercial break. They did do a little video package uh, saying that Matt Hardy's career was on the line, which was news to me. <laughs> um, but that's uh, that's like I, I'm sure they will have a wild, crazy brawl, and it'll be and Sammy will <laughs> do his best to atone for nearly murdering Matt Hardy a couple of weeks ago. So yeah. I'm sure it'll be good. But yes, the build has left a lot to be desired, which I think will be a theme of our uh, of our preview here. Yep. Dark Order versus Matt Cardona, Scorpio Sky, and Natural Nightmares. Is, is it, okay, one question. Is Scorpio Sky, did he leave SCU like on Dark or something? Uh, I no longer watch Dark. Oh, okay, that's good for you. So hey, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I got that uh I got I got a raise and I got I got dark taken off my plate. Good for you. <laughs> what could possibly I'm proud be, of you. Um, what could possibly be going better in my life right now? Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I don't know. They said that um they did make a point uh, maybe three weeks ago on Dynamite or a month ago on Dark that Scorpio Sky was going to focus on a singles career and Kazarian and Daniels were going to hold up the tag team end of SCU, but I don't think he officially left the SCU group. Okay. I mean, that's, I mean, that's small potatoes, I suppose, but yeah, it did, it did occur to me that when SCU came out and it was just Daniels and Kazarian, and then later in the show, Scorpio Sky was just part of this team of Cody's friends. Uh, yes. I was like, oh, that's, thought he was already in a group but i guess he's in this group too this we this could be another example as you said of uh you said off the air actually that you know it seems like there's a lot of guys booking their own stuff <laughs> yes maybe maybe there should be one person in charge and um they should make sure that everything makes sense instead of just letting everybody book their own stuff yeah, I mean, we I we were reminded, or we were talking about how it reminded us of the famed Dustin Rhodes Sean Spears <laughs> angle and match from their last pay per view, where Dustin Rhodes like got beat up and was off TV for like a week, and suddenly Sean Spears was doing segments about how he was retired or something. Yeah, and then at the pay per view he came back and Excalibur acted like this was some big shock and that. Dustin Rhodes has decided to continue his career instead. And it's like, okay, so somebody thought up some ideas and yeah. like shoved him into a two minute segment on dynamite. Yes. And then the announcers had to pretend like it was like a fully told fleshed out story. Yes. So that needs to change. So either tell less complicated stories. Yes. Or one guy needs to be in charge. I mean, preferably both. Yeah. Like, tell us complicated stories, and also one guy is in charge. If that's Tony Khan, great. If that's Cody, great. Whoever, some pick somebody. They're in charge. It all goes through one person, and they they go, okay, 
We have however many weeks until the next show. These eight guys are who we're focusing around. Right. And they get to have weird, lo- and they can do intricate, more advanced storylines. Everyone else, you're keeping it simple. And you just go from there. Right. Or how about when you have a production meeting before a show, you tell your announcers what the deal is, and instead of making jokes trying to pop each other during the angles, like poor poor Britt Baker and Big Swole on Dynamite this week. Mm. They're they're out there fighting each other, and Jim Ross decided to make a bunch of uh, pizza, and I'm using air quotes, jokes. Yes. It's like, it's like all right, well, these these people are, like, this has not been, I don't, I don't know. Like, tell the announcers to <laughs> quick, quick. Yes. Get, like, that was a pretty good little <laughs> angle. Like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't Shakespeare, but, like. No. Heel jumps baby face from behind and chokes her out and looks all evil and maniacal and, you know, walks off laughing, having put one over on the good, the, the hero. It's like, okay, good, fine, simple. Yes. And then, yes, where it's that. And during the main event angle, when, uh, when MJF pulls out his diamond ring and JR goes on like a 20 second tirade about, he's not about to ask him to prom. He's not about to ask him to go steady. I'm like, what are you talking? What are you talking about, you <laughs> weird old man? <laughs> Shut up. Jim Thank Ross you. is he's really bad at his job, and he's a detriment to the product. Agreed. And a ticking uh, public relations time bomb. Yup. <laughs> All right. There's a uh, 21 man casino battle royal on the show. That's usually the buy-in match but i guess this one's on the main card i'm not sure they focus sure. they focus most on darby allen uh lance archer brian cage and ricky starks in the build to this so i'm assuming one of those four guys is going to get a future aew world title match yeah i could see them building up archer for that especially if moxley is still the champion after the show um just because they haven't done anything with him really since the T- since he lost to Cody, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, and and obviously Cage has already had his TV match with Moxley, so I wouldn't think they would be going right back to that. And actually, so has Darby. Now that I think about it, so yeah, I, I think it would probably make sense for Archer to win here. But obviously, you also have Eddie Kingston's new weird group. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like Eddie Kingston's awesome, and I'm, yeah, it's it's fine. Like I don't. And all like Butcher and Blade and uh, you know the Pentagon and Phoenix are all are all good and or great, but it's just a weird when they walk out together. I'm like, this is the weirdest thing. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Hikaru Shida is defending the a- AEW Women's World Title against Thunder Rosa from the NWA. I am assuming that Thunder Rosa is just on loan. And it's not going to be working here long term, which is really too bad because Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb had a match on Dynamite this week that I don't know what it says about your women's division when you bring in two people off the street and they'll have the best match in your division in months and months. But that's exactly what happened. I also don't know what it means when you bring in Thunder Rosa and Serena Deeb and Thunder Rosa is wrestling for the title on Saturday. And Serena Deeb and Thunder Rosa go back and forth for like eight minutes. Yeah, it was kind of a weird call. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> All yeah. of it's weird. Um, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm excited that they found someone interesting for Hikaru Shida to wrestle. Like I said, she's like, as far as like from an in-ring standpoint, she's really one of my favorite people to watch in wrestling, especially in this pandemic era. So I think the match will be good, and that, yeah, I, I would like to see <laughs> Rosa stick around. Um, doesn't look like the NWA are doing shows anytime soon, so not like she's busy. Um, yeah, and sign Serena D while you're at it. It's not like you <laughs> can't use the help right now, as, especially as long as, like, Riho and whoever else are not able to get into the country, so... Yeah, I, I, it was fine, but yes, I probably wouldn't have waited until the go-home show to debut her and then had her go eight minutes with someone who isn't signed, as far as we know. 
And sure. again, even if she is signed, she's not the one getting the world title match. So right. probably should just have her do some signature moves and then cut a promo or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Thunder Rosa, she looks the part. She can work. She can talk. What the hell is anybody doing? Not <laughs> sign, not anyone who has a wrestling show should want her. Like, you think. Ridiculous. I had to watch NWA a couple times and she was on that show and she stood out as like a giant star in that show. And I'm like, why is she on this rinky dink show? Right. And as far as I know, there's no like Tessa Blanchard esque (laughs) skeletons in her closet where it's like, Oh, that's why she's not hired by any major company. As far as I know. Yes. All right. Uh, Kenny Omega and hangman page are wrestling FTR for the AEW world tag titles. A lot of a lot of grown men in their feelings is the uh, <laughs> is the theme of this this match this feud. Lots of grown men in their feelings. Lots of guys sure. in, in their mid to late thirties in their feelings. Yes, Hangman has transitioned from fun drunk into sad drunk. And look, we've all been there. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, it'll be a really good match. But the, the, <laughs> just letting that hang out there. Uh, it'll it'll mm-hmm. be a good match, and I I don't I feel like the zenith of the intrigue in the Hangman and Kenny versus the Bucks <laughs> stuff was when they had their match six months ago. That was great. Mm-hmm. And then it seemed like at that point you probably either should have done a split or decided to all let them be friends again Mm -hmm. (laughs) instead of doing like another, like, like going back and forth on whether they are friends. And like, it's like every six weeks they remember that there's like kind of an angle there. Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) um, I don't know. Like, so like when they had hangman prevent the young bucks from winning and then there's like an implication in the promo on the go home show that, well, he, he didn't do it because he's friends with FTR he did it because he didn't want to wrestle the Young Bucks. It's like, because he doesn't, because he's scared of them. He doesn't want to wrestle them because they're his friends. Like, right. I guess, I guess that's part of the intrigue, but uh, I don't know. It's, it'll probably be a really good wrestling match. So if you can, <laughs> if you can, uh, if the feelings are not for you, you'll <laughs> at least probably get some good wrestling out of it. That's yeah. There hasn't been a bad tag match on an AEW show in months and months and months. So I'm going to just enjoy the wrestling and try to ignore the feelings because I don't I don't care about the feelings. Um, they're also doing. They just assume everyone watches being being the elite, and so they assume that you know that the subtext and the implication here is that Kenny Omega is the one manipulating Paige and Omega is like going to turn on Paige and go off as a single. Uh, Mm. But I, you know, if you haven't watched being the elite, you wouldn't, I don't know that you would get that from watching their television shows every week. I mean, I've, I've seen in recent weeks, there was like that bit where Kenny like started beating the crap out of Marco stunt after the one match. Yeah, and then like I think it was on like last week's show or two weeks or the Saturday show maybe where he just like grabbed a chair and started going after somebody after a match. So it's like I I I'm aware and I do watch being the elite sometimes, not all the time, but um, lucky. <laughs> um, but I'm so I was vaguely aware that like they were hinting at Kenny turning, but it wasn't clear to me that that means is Kenny turning on everybody. Is he just turning on Hangman? Is and, are he and Hangman going to continue to be a duo, but a heel duo, and they'll officially turn against the Bucks? We don't who, know. Who is in love with who? Right. If you watched the Go Home Show this week, would you have had any cl- inclination that Kenny Omega might be turning? No. Uh, he did <laughs> comedy about chocolate milk because he doesn't drink alcohol. And, um, and Tully Blanchard pooping his pants. Yes, yes. Um, and then he, which, I mean, Vince McMahon would have loved that joke. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, but, and then, yes, he, 
and then Hangman came down and he either had eyeshadow on or he hadn't slept in a while. <laughs> and they just kind of did their little bit there again about Hangman having his doubts or whatever. And then that was the end of the segment. So, yeah, if going based solely on what they have chosen to show us on the television show. We know that Kenny in recent weeks, but again, it really hasn't been focused on that much, has shown some more aggression. But there has been no right. hint, to my knowledge, on television that he is trying to manipulate Paige or maybe <laughs> planning or plotting against him and or the Young Bucks. Right. Right. By the way, uh, did you see the promo that Brandy Rhodes cut on Dark this week? I did not. I, I saw tweets about it and that she called out Anna J. Yes. But I did not see the content of the promo. You should watch that promo. Okay. For, like, comedy reasons, or because it's actually good? I'll let you decide. Fair enough. All right, I just, we'll report back next week. I think you should, I think you should watch the promo. All right. Um, I'll just <laughs> point. It's, it's something, man. I'll just point out here that I remember before we get off of the Omega subject here, a listener writing uh, a question to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer about is there a dollar figure that would have made Kenny Omega um, go to WWE instead of go to go start AEW? Mm-hmm. And Dave gave the oddly specific number of $3.5 million a year and a 30-minute WrestleMania match with AJ Styles as what he thinks WWE could have offered to make Omega go sign with them instead of go to AEW. Hmm. And then I think of an interview on Wrestling Observer Live that Brandy Rhodes did a few months ago where she was asked about booking her own stuff. This isn't the Nightmare Collective stuff was going on. And she talked about hiring an actress to play a therapist in a skit. And the actress... Uh, was her sister-in-law, <laughs> right. um, who is uh, not, in fact, a professional actress. Okay. And and I'm beginning to just wonder if any or all of these people are ever being the least bit honest with us. <laughs> <laughs> you mean that? Are you mean to tell me there might be some less than uh, less than savory characters here in the wrestling business? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? I pulled my headphones out. (laughs) (laughs) What you are saying, what you appear to be alleging here, is that there may be some less than honest people in the wrestling business. I'm just saying, yes. I'm suggesting that. And I'm suggesting that all of these buddy-buddy, the group that started this company, so loyal to each other, that wanted to change the world... Their loyalties are maybe not all that loyal. Okay. That's all I'm I mean, saying. I've been thinking a lot about that this week. I mean, yeah, I look, I, I think the idea that any, if you look at what Cody Rhodes books for himself yeah. on this show every week versus what the young bucks have done on their shows or what Kenny has historically done with his work in other companies. Um, It's hard for me to imagine that those views of what pro wrestling is or should be could coexist in perpetuity without some friction of some kind. Sure. That doesn't mean, you know, it's chicken or fish. There's not necessarily a wrong answer, but if all of those people are quote unquote equally in charge, (laughs) Uh, you know, at some point, somebody might get rubbed the wrong way if the top boss picks their idea over somebody else's idea or vice versa. Yeah, that's been thinking a lot about that. Anyway, watch that Brandy promo. All right. Uh, Chris Jericho and Orange Cassidy are wrestling it all out in a Mimosa Mayhem match. I assume this is a way for Jericho to lose without doing a job. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, (laughs) 
Because I mean, we want to get him over. We don't get want to get him too over. You know. <laughs> right. Right. By the way, laughed my ass off this week when Justin Roberts announced Chris Jericho was weighing. <laughs> 335 pounds on dynamite. <laughs> it's very funny. It's the only good thing Justin Roberts has maybe ever done. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, related news to Chris Jericho. Uh, somebody who was at that Sturgis rally uh, died of COVID this week. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big outbreak in South Dakota right now. Yeah. Wild. It's weird how every time people go into a large amount of people go into a public place. There seems to be outbreaks in that area following that. It's weird. How can we predict this? And and there's cases in 11 states that have been traced to that rally. Wow. Wow. So it seems, I mean, who could have, who could have predicted this? You know, we're only in month nine of this. Who could have, Yeah. who could have predicted that the same thing that's happened every time would happen this time? You know, I don't know what you're implying, but Chris Jericho is a good family man. <laughs> Just a good, decent family man. <laughs> loves loves just his wife and no one else. Yep, yep, yep. All about all about spending time with his kids and mm-hmm. his his one wife. Yeah. <laughs> I swear, his one wife. <laughs> I swear. Weird that you'd have to be that specific about it, but I have no reason to believe him. <laughs> <laughs> He's being less than truthful with me, so. <laughs> All right. Uh, John Moxley versus MJF for the AEW title. It's the main event of All Out. Moxley can't use the paradigm shift. Um, <sighs> John Moxley is a top guy. I don't know if John Moxley is the top guy. Would you agree or disagree with that statement? I mean, I th- I th- yeah, I think he's the guy right now. Uh, he's your, I think he's your Bret Hart. He's your, he's maybe your guy until you find the next guy. Mm. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, like I said, I don't think he's right. right. Ratings or viewership or whatever have not seemingly gone particularly much higher with him on top, but they haven't free fall fallen either. So he's doing a fine job. Um, obviously, long term, I think everyone sees MJF as a guy to build around. I don't feel like this is the right feud. The build has not made me think this is the time to put the belt on MJF. I don't necessarily think MJF is a guy that ever needs a title either. <laughs> you know, he's Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper never was never world champion. Right. Yeah. I. I. I think, yeah, I think you get more mileage out of the, he gets more mileage out of that stupid ring <laughs> yeah. than, than he does, I think, out of being world champion. And again, I'm not saying you could never put the belt on him, but right now, I'd leave it on Moxley. Again, because there don't, I, I don't even know who the challenger would be on the other side of, of that if you did put the belt on, on MJF. Because um, I don't, it doesn't really feel like they've been, elevating anyone or getting anyone ready so so um, they have like they have like an eight eight or nine week cycle till the next pay-per-view so they will probably go through like you know one of those four week cycles where they do a, a title match on tv but it's not really like the big program and then right. they'll get into the big program so like that's fine like whoever wins the, the battle royal they could do a short little program with whoever wins the title match and then we get into the real challenger somewhere down the line. Yeah, that would be fine. Like I said, I just I don't feel like this is the time to take the belt off of Moxley, even if he's not your I don't think this is a guy you build around for five years, but to me right now he's your best option. Sure. All right. Uh anything else you want to talk about? Well, we did neglect to mention that the young bucks are wrestling the Jurassic Express. Oh my gosh, how could I possibly sc- I mean, that's match, the, that should be the pre-show match. <laughs> it's going to be a great match. Oh, yeah. It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, it's just, you know, it's just a match that was th- thrown together because they apparently came to TV this week and I was like, oh, wait a minute. We didn't book the Young Bucks. <laughs> How'd that happen? <laughs> if only wrestling were fake, so we could have set something up. <laughs> they are very distraught and they're very concerned about their feelings. 
That's right. right. I guess I guess feelings take precedence over over wrestling. Um, Always. But anyway, yeah. I like on paper looks like there's some going to be some fun wrestling and probably some garbage wrestling, depending on whether you like that style of wrestling. It might be a really fun show, um, but. I don't know. Like, I, I wasn't really excited about the last AEW show, and I thought that one, like, overperformed, but mm-hmm. was a little too long. So if this show is, like, could be off the air by 11 p.m., that'd be great. No chance. Not even a little bit. Nope. <laughs> um, nope. But we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to cross my fingers for it anyway. <laughs> and like I said, I think there will be some good wrestling on it, and you can choose whether or not you wish to engage with the feelings around that wrestling. Awesome. All right. uh, Until next time, everybody, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Less Jibba Jabba and more, uh, more wrestling here. Sure. All right. A tight 51 minutes. <laughs> Oh, man. Chris Jericho. Can you imagine dying because you went to a Fozzie concert? Just really, I mean, for any sort of public thing, I went to a motorcycle rally. <laughs> yes. To die. The Rock. How does the like one of the richest men in the world get COVID? I mean, my thought is like, no matter whether or not he was staying home or not, there's like personal trainers and like a a staff, like a cleaning and cooking staff and yeah. agents and whoever probably coming in and out of that place all the time and security and whatever else. Yeah. So one of the poor's probably gave it to him. <laughs> it's terrible, but probably accurate. <sighs> all right. Well, that'll have to do for our uh, our post show content this week. That's, I think it's good. It's a, it's a little diamond in the rough. I try to keep on keeping on.